course angling is not just carp, carp, carp. Famous carp fisherman Jan Porter is also a noted predator angler. It's a hot summer day and we're at Bishop's Bowl Fishery in Warwickshire after pike. And it looks terrific in all corners. How do you know where to go first? Well, I, I don't. That's, that's the honest answer. At, at, and I'm spoilt by choice because there's so many features on here. You're making this up as you go along? No, I, I, I was going to say is I always ask locally, um, try and get some local knowledge. Yeah. Uh, when you're looking for predators, you're normally looking for drop-offs. So yeah. if I just came here completely blind, I'd be looking for some deeper water, so it goes from shallow to deep. That's where pike normally hang about, yeah. in that deeper water, looking up, looking forward, waiting for bait fish to creep around across the top, and then they'll pounce. Right. Um, but, but at the moment, uh, we've been treated to a wonderful display of carp spawning, which I uh, wasn't expecting today, to be honest. That's fantastic. Are, they, are the pike suddenly going to decide that carp eggs are the food of choice? I've seen pike swimming on the top. What well, I can only imagine they're fishing on buzzers, you know, feeding on buzzers. Yeah. So they will take really tiny particle baits uh, and fish eggs, I guess, would be a nice snack for them. But generally, when it's hot like this, they tend to sort of bask and just wait. And if a you know a decent sized fish swims by, and it's worth the, the the effort for them to have a go at it. Yeah. They'll they'll strike at it. I mean, where I live, there are canals that are broken up with collapsed bridges and you know fields have drifted across them. And where you get that sort of cul-de-sac, there's yeah. there's often pike just there. They like yeah. that end. Well, they, they will they will corner fish. They they they're not a pack fish like a zander necessarily, but they will group together, and they will cordon off an area in the corner. I've fished oh, quite really? a few gravel pits where you get like little inlets and fingers, if you like, just at perpendicular angles, where they used to drag to find out where the seams of gravel were, and that's always on the front of those sort of like minders on the front of there, there's always pike there and they're good spots to catch them. So I think you're right, corners of lakes are worth a go. Yeah. Obviously cover, you're looking really to try and find out where the bait fish are. Yes. And once you find a bait fish, that Mr. Pike's not gonna be far away. Well, depending on which part of the world you come from, some people call these jerk baits or crank baits. It's, uh, as you can see, a fairly sizable beast. <laughs> um, big baits for big fish, that's the maxim, I guess. But, well, this is a fire tiger. It's, it's, um, it's a shad. It, 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 and fire tiger is, whether the pike like it the best or not, I don't know, but anglers like it. And you know, lures is sometimes about what anglers like, collecting them. Um, but you, fire you, tiger's a good good pattern for me anyway. For every one of those, there's about 10 different variations of that one probably. So, and then there's different ways, different lengths. It goes on and on. I've got, you know, if I, if I could only have one lure as a meal for the rest of my life, I'd probably live till 150, you know, <laughs> I've got that many. So this is a sinking lure, so it's quite heavy. So I need something fairly significant to cast with, and I'm also using a little multiplier, which is... Um, Professionals reel. Well, people call them bait casters. These have always captured my imagination since I was a real tiny nipper. Um, you used to get the old catalogues and see all these Scandinavian kinds of I was going to say, it's a Norwegian in you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I used to pour over them, but never could afford them. And um, I treated myself about, must be 16 years, 17 years ago to this. Um, just a nice little reel. Takes a bit of getting used to. Got to get the timing right. It's not like a fixed spool reel. Um, press the clicker there. That releases the line under tension, and you can just trim that there to stop these horrible overruns. But uh, and then it's just a case of making sure nobody's about and just whacking him out somewhere. And then um, and doing all this. And this is quite hard work actually. To make this to make this work, you've got to really physically move it quite so you're not just winding in are you you're no. banging it along I, i'm jerking it if you like I'm, I'm 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 tugging at it quite fast as you can see it goes through the water like a like a wounded fish I'm not only fishing in that spot and working different depths i work it in a big arc very three-dimensional then it's depth of water yeah an arc of water as well yeah and you can see when you when you jerk that around, it's almost like a dying fish, and that's the whole point of this. It creates a huge amount of shock waves in the water. It's a rattler, so you can hear it rattling around. Yeah. Um, very visual, very dynamic in the water, um, and we can fish it at different depths. I'm just going to cast around a little bit now, almost 12 o'clock. So I'm working my way around now. It's about 
eight feet two, that way, isn't it? Three, four, five, until I've covered the whole of this area. Now there is a lot of weed and you've got to be aware of that. That's not to say you can't fish near weed, you've just got to put up with having it caught on, on your trebles or on the face of your lure. But amongst that weed is the bait fish and just behind the bait fish is the pike. So, you know, a lot of people avoid weed and don't go for it, but I'm actually casting into it. And you know, you've got to be, you've got to be patient and you've got to be prepared to work at it. Um, this is this is sort of one extreme of lure fishing. But I've caught big pike on really tiny lures, like six gram spinners. I've had pike up to mid doubles. Really? Yeah. Tiny, absolutely minute things. Tiny things. Yeah. Really, really tiny. Um, on a similar water to this, an old cement works quarry. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll just play this area out here okay. with a few trots, and then. We'll walk up between where you, what used to be the joining um, stretch, the can canalised bit of the of the actual lake, yep. and then go out into the big lake right. on the other side. So, yes. just have a plop around. If you get one, just give me a shout. We'll do. Thanks, okay. Sir. Cheers, Charlie. It's not easy this one. The weather is hot, hot, hot. Jan starts to feel the pressure. I'd go so far as to say that there's nothing in the lake. <laughs> if it won't eat one of these. Well, politicians suffer from events. Anglers suffer from conditions. And it's a lovely, warm, bright day. So not great for pike. Possibly quite good for a little lie down, I think. Well, desperate conditions mean desperate measures. Jan has a secret weapon up his sleeve. In angling terms, this is the equivalent of Thunderbirds are go. It's a radio-controlled boat designed to deliver Jan's law to the far reaches of the lake. Off it goes, drops its payload, and back it comes. But still the pike are unimpressed. Happily, Jan's fishing buddy Steve comes to the rescue. Well done, Steve. Thanks, mate. <laughs> it's only a teenager. What yeah. do you mean that's only a teenager? It's a monster. Whee! Excellent. Yahoo! Yahoo. Well done, well done. Oh, even, even, the, even the carp are applauding in the background. Well, lovely job. Look at that. We've got such great colours in here as well. We'll just open that and hook him up for me. Please, no. Is it true they take whole dogs? And, and, only, and only small ones and like And babies, yours. yeah, you're right, okay. Push chairs. Yeah, whole push chairs. If we open this one up, we find a push chair inside. All right, now we've got to be careful, haven't we? Because these things have got teggies. Teeth. So, first of all, have a quick look where things are. And that's really at it, Steve. Really, really clanked onto that. Look, it's just completely disappeared. It's right inside. He's a hungry bike. Yeah. If, if you put your hand in its mouth and it closes it, you can't consider it biting your hand, it's just closing its mouth with teeth. No. So jaws it ain't? No, and it's not a massive pipe, but it's, uh, it's bigger than the one I caught, mate. And Good job, well done. A little a little jack pike. Um, That's not little. <laughs> Take your hand off. <laughs> a big jack pike. That's the way to show it. <laughs> Steve, well done, fella. Yay. Very good. Nice one. <laughs> He's all worth the while, yeah, and we'll put him back. Super job. Mission accomplished. Brilliant. Come back when he's a bit bigger. That's been the story of our course fishing, hasn't it? <laughs> it has, really. But on a day like today, even a teenager has ideas. There he goes, straight away.